This video is designed to show you how to simulate a system in Simulink, which is a, a graphical tool that comes with MATLAB. Uh, when that system, the relationship between its input and output, is described in terms of a differential equation. So we have up here, this is a system, and the way the system works is described by this differential equation, where the time derivative of the output y is equal to a constant times the output y plus the input. This is a first order linear constant coefficient differential equation, and they show up all the time in control systems, uh, also in signal processing systems. Uh, you'll discover uh, at some point fairly soon that it actually is, there are ways to solve this that don't involve using Simulink, but the goal is to show you how to do this with Simulink. So in order to do this in Simulink, um, clean up after myself here, in order to do this in Simulink, we uh, need to do one thing first. Simulink does have a derivative operator, but when you try to use it in the solution of these differential equations, it tends to give you numerical instability. So rather than using a derivative, we'd like to use an integral. So the idea is I'm going to take um, this whole differential equation, and I'm going to integrate it with respect to time. And when I do that, I get... Um, well, here we'll put an ugly colored integral here, and another ugly colored integral here. Okay, and we're going to be integrating from 0 to t. Okay, so when I do this, then, we'll get a nicer color for the actual equation. The integral of the time derivative is just the y of t. And this is equal to the integral from some initial time, we'll say it's 0, 0 to t of a y of tau. I'm using tau here as a dummy variable of integration. If that bothers you, don't worry about it. Plus x of tau d tau plus the initial conditions on y. Okay. So the idea here is that the output at any point in time t is given by this integral plus the initial value for y. Now, with this, I can actually um, uh, fairly straightforwardly implement this in Simulink. So let's go to Simulink. See if we can make it pop up where it's supposed to. Okay, so now I have my Simulink window. Um, I have my uh, uh, library browser that gives me access to all the blocks that I want to use. And let's suppose that for the source here, we're going to use a uh, step function, because step functions are fun. They uh, give us interesting stuff. So the step function is actually going to be our input x. Now for our output y, if we go back to our equation, um, we're going to have the output, the output y, here we'll do, use a different color to mess up the picture, the output y is going to be the result of an integral of all of this stuff. So we need to get an integrator block, and we'll connect that to, or we'll label its output as y. So let's go back to Simulink and find the integrator. One place you can find it is in the continuous pad under integrator. And the integrator is indicated by 1 over s, and uh, there's all sorts of, uh, well, the reason for that has to do with Laplace transforms, so that'll get talked about later. And now, um, the output of my integrator is, uh, this output here is going to be y. 
the input to the integrator, if we go back to our equation, is this mess. Okay, so I need to be able to compute a times y, add to it my input x, and integrate it. So that's what the input of the integrator is going to be. So I go back to Simulink. I'm going to need to multiply the output by a constant. And uh, the way you do that is uh, with the gain block. You can find it under math operations or commonly used blocks. So we'll put a gain block there. And then we'll wire the output of the gain block. Oh, we don't want to do that yet. That was a bad idea. We'll just not worry about that for a minute. Um, what we'll do is we'll wire the output of the integrator to the input of the gain block. Because again, the output of the integrator is y, and we're going to multiply y by a constant, which we're calling a in the differential equation. Let's suppose, to begin with, that we want that constant to be 2. So we double click on the gain and set the gain to 2, and there we go. Now we also then need to add the input to this. So we'll uh, get an adder from the math operations. And now we can wire this into the integrator, maybe. And we can wire the output of the gain to the adder. Maybe. I find I have a very difficult time getting LabVIEW to or Simulink to uh, actually get these things to match up. Oh wow, I may spend the rest of the video just trying to line this up. I'm making a mess. I have it undo add line. We'll just do undo all this stuff. Okay, we'll take this guy and drag him over there. Ah, now we've got a connection. That was painful. And now we'll take our step input, which represents x, and we'll run him over to the adder as well. And now we have the whole thing put together. Um, the last thing we want to do is be able to see what the uh, output looks like. So we'll go to the Syncs menu, get a scope, and wire the scope to the output. Okay, so now we should be at the point where we can run the simulation and see what the output of our system that's represented by this differential equation will be. So we'll tell it to start. It runs for a while, and then we bring up the scope, which represents the uh, output. And you'll notice that it's 0 up until time 1, and then all of a sudden it just gets really, really big. That's because my gain here is positive, and we'll end up learning later that if you have a positive gain, uh, a positive a value in the differential equation that we're using, that gives you an exponentially increasing signal. So let's change our gain, say, to minus 2. Okay, so we've changed the gain to minus 2. We start our simulation again, it runs. We look at our scope again, and now you'll see, once the step function occurs, that it goes up to one half and just stays there. So that's kind of fun. Another thing we can do is change the initial condition. And this is changing our initial value of y. So let's change this to 3 and run the simulation again. Look at the scope. Where is our scope? Scope, are you there? 
our scope has disappeared. There's the scope. Um, you'll notice that these windows are doing weird things. Well, you can see here then that we started uh, at a value of 3, our initial value of 3, it starts to fall, and then when the step function kicks in at time 1, it starts to go up again. So anyway, um, that is how you implement a uh, a model of a system that is represented by a differential equation. There are some obvious extensions to this, which may not be obvious, but, well, they, they, they may not be completely obvious, but, for example, if you want to uh, model a system that is described by several different coupled differential equations, you can do that. Uh, it gets to be much more complicated, but Simulink typically will be able to solve it. So. With that, we'll end the video.